Hello, everybody. Prow here, and welcome to another episode on Bedrock Guide. And I love starting out right here because we get to see all of our wonderful town layout. And over in the distance, right over my head right there, we can see what we did in the last episode, which is the first part of our functional town after the planning. Before the planning, we did the, the iron farm trading hall right here. But after the planning, that's the first part we built. And what did we build last time? We built this awesome sugarcane farm, passive sugarcane farm. It'll be running all the time in the background. I have not run this thing, like been around very much while it's been running. It's got us a couple stacks of, oh, almost three stacks of sugarcane now, which is great. Um, also, we built this awesome micro farm, which we can turn on and off if we ever need a big burst of sugarcane and we don't have enough from this guy right here, um, which this thing has quite a bit of sugarcane in it as well, because I ran it for maybe a minute or so. Um, and today's episode is going to have to do with this kind of, because in today's episode, we will be building the worker cottage for our worker that will be tending to the sugarcane fields. I will be revealing who this worker is going to be towards the end of the episode. So stay tuned. Uh, we will walk through the building process of doing a diagonally positioned building like this guy right here. I've, I've actually never done one of these before, but I did mess around with it in the creative world a little bit. And I think I got the hang of it for the most part. Um, after this, we will set up the storage on the inside of the farm, on the inside of the, the house or the, the cottage here. Um, and then we'll set up our item transportation system down below. So if you guys want to know how I plan on getting all the sugar cane, you'll get, get to see that. And then after that, we'll cover over the sugarcane farms. Um, we will put a great looking sugarcane field in its place, do some terraforming and some decorating, that sort of thing. And that'll, that'll kind of be our objective for the episode. Also, let me mention this before some of you guys jump down in the comments section below. So honestly, let's be real. Some of you probably already have mentioned this in the comments below. I've posted a world download for everybody. It was actually made prior to me starting the sugarcane farm. I just forgot to mention it in the last episode. So check the description box down below and you will see a link to download the, is it almost nighttime again? You will see a link to download the world file after I did all the planning, but before I did the sugarcane farm. Hope everybody enjoys it. And actually, if you do end up downloading the world, hop into my discord server or at me on Twitter at prowl8413 and send me screenshots of you in the world. Send me screenshots of things you do in the world. If you like, maybe like pick it up from where I left off here. It'd be kind of fun to see what you guys do. Um, and yeah, I like to see what's going on. I try to like hit like and comment on every single one I see. So make sure you do that. Okay, I'm about to break a cardinal rule of mine. I usually don't place profession blocks this close to any villager related farm. But I kind of want one over here. Eh. Please don't give sparkles. Please don't give sparkles. Please don't give sparkles. I think we might be okay. Okay, okay, okay. And then I want to get a crafting table over here too, because why not? And this will help us out in getting this farm started, which is what we are about to do. And first things first is we need to lay the foundation for this place because I think I want it to be raised up on top of a small cobblestone foundation. So let's replace some of the uh, powder, the concrete powder now okay so we have our foundation here and this is the method i take whenever i am building more or less anything um i kind of start out with a like a shell so to speak we're going to start out with something simple and then as we go we're going to add shape and definition and all these different things to it now i decided when i was like making the build palette for their, for my town here that my one of my like lesser accent colors was going to be jungle wood planks so with the jungle wood planks what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to stack up probably about four maybe five high here i'm not quite sure how high yet we're going to kind of eyeball it and i picked jungle because i actually i like the color to it um it's a little different than oak and you know spruce like everybody likes to use um, it's going to be used in a little bit more of our, I guess you could say like poorer type, like houses and things like that, where like less wealthy people live. And, and this is like the poorest type house. This is a, um, a worker cottage. So, um, you don't really get like, there's not going to be anything below this in terms of class. So that's why it's going to be mostly the jungle wood, um, that we're going to be using here. 
and then what we're gonna do is I think we're gonna put like a maybe like a stone roof on it let's check that out after I get this up okay I think that's looking okay so far like height wise I was worried five would be too tall but I think it's good now we need to add some sort of extra like like dimension to this so what we're gonna do and a little bit extra structure I guess too is we're gonna throw in some oak logs on each of the four sides it's a little kind of it's a little hard to do this versus doing it on a uh, like a standard straight build from what I've like gathered and and mess around with this uh, but we're gonna see what this does and we can always adjust it after we get this thing up if we need to all right and then I just need a little block right here to kind of get us started place our first block down and once I have that I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try to like snake no, not definitely not with you. <laughs> We're gonna try to snake this around and I don't know I'm probably gonna have to get scaffolding to do this I can see just to make this easy now with the roof border on one of the things I know that I want to do with this is I don't want it to come up to be too tall because it is a cottage right it it's, it's a kind of big cottage right now um, so we're gonna flatten the roof out and instead of using the stairs going up further I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna use half slabs and to continue to make things more interesting what we're gonna do instead of using stone the stone bricks like we were there uh, what we'll do is we'll trace this area with andesite and the andesite will just give us a little bit different color a little bit different texture all right there we go roof is on you can't really tell too much from the bottom it depend it'll depend on where you are like we're way over there we'll probably see it a little bit more but again I want it to be small and subtle and then that's it guys we're all done. I'm just kidding we're not all done I was just joking uh, now what we got to do I think what we're gonna do is do I want to do the inside yet no let's not do the inside yet let's work on the outside a little bit more we're gonna add in some life and some detail to this thing first step is windows you need windows so we could put a couple right here we can put a couple right here now I know from my test build that I've done we're gonna have stuff kind of all across the back right here so we're not gonna put any towards the back what we will do is we'll throw in a couple more here and then we'll do the same thing on this opposite side and then we'll fill it in with some glass and then that will give us some natural light into the build and open it up and make it a little bit more interesting from the outside next is gonna be shutters because what windows are complete without shutters are they functional shutters no they aren't aren't does that matter no it does not uh, shutters will just give us a little bit of depth and detail because you have a little bit of like it pokes out from the wall some so that helps and just kind of dresses up those windows a little bit to where they look a little bit less flat and a little bit less boring next I feel like we need some kind of a front porch we don't want to go too large with this just because the space that we have so maybe we'll do maybe let's knock this guy out let's do something no let's leave him in let's go here and here then let's go kind of like across like this something like that that doesn't look bad I think it looks okay let's leave that how it is for now and then we'll see how it looks as we pull everything together I always say this and I'll say it again to you guys always be willing to change things I'm willing to change almost any of this right now depending on what comes up next this next next bits actually a little bit tricky because yeah this guy it's hard to put a door you can't just put one door here right it doesn't it doesn't work you cannot just put one door we're gonna break this door with a shovel by the way because that's what I'm doing right now um, so what we're gonna need to do is do a little corner trick right here oh gosh that's not working where is my axe at the face the other way we stand right here we put one here and put one here we use two doors it's a little funky looking but I think it's what we have to deal with. I think that's going to be just something that it is what it is. Still looking a little boring though. So if we want to liven it up, we can add in some bushes. Some bushes will give us a little bit of color, a little, no, a little bit of life. And then what we can do is we can, we can put these guys in a few different areas and we can maybe get like a little bit of like an overgrowth like look going on like this maybe just a to, to really break up this wall because this wall is so flat looking so I think some bushes will do us some good also no I, I was thinking I want to put a back porch on here but you're not gonna be able to get in from the back so I don't think that'll make sense so maybe what we can do is like in the back right here we can add in a decent amount of overgrowth 
just to kind of sell like this being a more I guess well thought out area yeah I think that's looking good let's throw another one right here so that's helping us some over here let's not go too crazy with it because we've gone a little crazy on the other sides yeah I think that's good again I don't want to overdo this thing I really don't so let's just maybe do like maybe I don't think I want a vine on the on the back here let's maybe do like a vine it's gonna spread across those so let's maybe do a vine right here and then maybe let's do one like right in here I think will be good let's see what those look like after they grow let's make our door area here a little more interesting maybe let's bring in some cobble and just to like get a little bit of something going on here yeah something like that like just it's giving us a little bit of slope there I think that's helping out with the flatness a little bit also what we can do is we can add in some like random fence posts here and there uh, just in a couple little areas just to, again kind of break things up a little bit let's like get rid of the flat look Ooh, or do we want to what will happen if we do this what will happen if we do this what if we oh yeah I like that okay we're doing that all the way around okay okay I'm liking where we're at I think we have a little bit more definition to the place now I think we need a little bit more going on with the foundation area here maybe a little bit of randomness like some of this is kind of broken down again this guy's not this guy doesn't have a lot of money right and he's he's always busy at a sugarcane fields so maybe he doesn't always have time no I don't like that maybe he doesn't always have time to like tend to the to his house repairs and that sort of thing so he's having to let's actually do this yeah so you know sometimes the house is it's just in a little disrepair and that's fine that's okay it happens it's okay um yeah i like the way that that's looking this one this one not so much let's do this let's do another one down here in the ground yeah i think that's looking good and now we have like a little bit of disrepair going on and then maybe where's my shovel let's get a shovel out and then like maybe a little bit of pathing it's coming over here to the roadway this roadway is getting really close to the front of our house which means maybe we'll end up pushing this one back a little bit when we get to this one i think we're getting there i think it's really close Ooh, i'm trying to think do i like this better than this let's look let's look ah uh, it's a tough call this just feels so flat to me so I it makes me kind of like this maybe I don't go with the stone brick because that stone brick okay I think I like it I think we're gonna do andesite it'll it'll kind of tie in with the roof which is fine and oh that's a weird flicker with the glass you guys see that um, and it'll break things up a little bit I don't know if maybe I'll switch this out for something of a different color but I think this is what we're going with after a little bit more work, we have livened this place up quite a bit. I replaced some of the jungle planks with oak planks. The color's a little different, but I think it works to like seldomly mix some in. Um, you'll see that around, right? Some here, some here, etc. I bone mealed the grass. So now we have some like terrain height difference going on here. At least the appearance of that, which I think looks really good. Um, also, I put some flowers in the front just to add a little bit extra color to the front. And my favorite thing is we added in some water and some sugar cane. Since this is a sugar cane farm, it makes sense that we have a little bit of sugar cane growing around here. I even used a little trick here, guys. A couple little tricks I want to let you know about. Number one, this is a top half slab. I have waterlogged it. So there is water inside of that half slab, although you can't see it. So that way I could put sugar cane beside it. So it looks like to the naked eye, sugar cane should not be able to grow here. But it can and it does and also to limit the height of the sugar cane that way they all don't just eventually grow to be three tall i put a piece of string above it now the sugar cane will not grow some of it will because I, I wanted it to be that height and some of it will not we got that one height limited that one height limited this one height limited as well because i didn't want it to go up too high in front of the window there um i could even go like we could go super crazy if we wanted to and like we could make one of these guys be like a four tall somewhere i don't know where maybe this one in the back here would be fun to be four tall like that <laughs> yeah and then maybe we'll add like a two tall one right here and then put another piece of string over top of this one too just to add just to add a little bit of like something we need a little something there 
So I think it's looking good. We swapped the uh, the andesite in here, and I put a spruce uh, log, the force, the like all sided log that has the log look on all sides instead of the like barkless like inside look. And this chicken, he's really wanting to hear. Just go in. He's been wanting to get in there for a while. So yeah, I think the house exterior is looking good. And now it's time to move on. Last little bit I almost forgot, and I could feel it coming in the comments section, is to add a little bit of extra detail up here. I did some things such as added some mossy bricks, which you can get by combining vines with these stone bricks or stone brick stairs. And we did the same thing with some cobblestone or some areas too. I didn't overdo it, I don't think, but it definitely, again, wants to look like the house is in some level of disrepair because the cottage worker here is both not very, very wealthy and really doesn't have a lot of time because he's working in fields all the time. So I think... I think this does it. And speaking of the fields, now it's time to cover this whole thing up with some grass. Okay, field is all covered. And I have a nice little grid pattern of water in here. So I should be able to start laying down all the sugar cane. And if I, I did it right, it should mean that every single... No. Yes. It should mean that every single space through here should be fillable with sugar cane like to a to a certain extent and i think it's gonna work so i'm gonna fill it with sugar cane but we're not gonna stop there after we do that we're probably actually gonna add in some sort of path through it so some of the sugar cane that we're putting in is gonna come right back out but again like i told you guys i like to get that like base canvas down first just to kind of see how things are gonna look and then i kind of like to paint over it from there and that's what we're gonna do here and a couple upgrades later, and we are all good to go with the look of the farm. And we're about to move on to functionality. We've got the sugarcane field in, and I still need to carve the path in it. We're not quite there yet. Um, we added our worker, Wildies. Wildies was a um, contest winner on my Patreon server, which was totally awesome. They played like a Hunger Games-like contest, which was really cool. Wildies won the contest, and he's also a streamer. I'll try to remember to drop a link to his Twitch down in my description below. And also, I thought it was looking a little flat up here still. So I added in like a little front like porch overhang area, which kind of overhangs this. And I thought that was a nice addition. It definitely breaks up that like blockiness of the build a little bit. And it it just that little bit right there really added a ton. So I'm super happy with that. Um, now though, actually, I would like to break away because one thing I forgot to do that somebody mentioned in the comments below was I should make a map wall. So let's make a map wall really quick. And we got our map wall here ready to go. I think this is going to stay out on display, but maybe what we'll actually do, I locked all these maps. So what we'll do as we go is we will like update our progress and we'll keep the old maps somewhere else. So um, I got all of these locked. I think this one goes here. Oh, I need kind of need item frames for this. You got to have item frames. We're going to take item frames and put them on this side and put them on this side. And a map wall is a really cool way to like track the progress of your base or just kind of see what it looks like at any given time. So I believe this one goes here. This one's up here. This one's down here. And that one's right there. <laughs> awesome. So that's what our base area at this point in time looks like. You see the wall down here, the wall up here, and all of the planning looks really, really, really cool here. Let's go ahead and just get this guy up on the other side here too. Um, you are this side. You are this side. You are this side. Awesome. So we got our map wall all ready to go. Let's go ahead and let's knock out the rest of our progression for getting the item system delivery system made up. All right, we're knee deep in this thing right now. I thought it'd be a good time to bring you guys in. So uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making an auto dropper circuit. I've done a few of these already. It's gonna take our sugar cane down a couple paths and then lead it eventually to um, the uh, water elevator, which is right here, right? So uh, I've got ice down to make the items move quickly. Um, the water elevator, um, if you have not seen one of these before, is simply a piece of soul sand, all water sources going all the way up. And you have to make sure all sides are enclosed. So these buttons do enclose that side. And that will shoot the items up for us, which is great. 
Um, and here is the auto dropper. I'm using a special circuit with this. That way, no sugar cane actually ends up sitting in here once I can finish connecting the circuit. Um, so I used a comparator, which can see what is inside of this dropper through a block, okay? So it can see that an item is inside of this um, this dropper and it'll it'll light up even if there's only one item in there when one item is in it's going to send a signal to this repeater which is going to give that signal full power um, so it'll it'll go the full 15 um, of distance for redstone and then a comparator clock which I've shown you guys multiple times before and then we actually drop that signal down come over go across and then I'll end up connecting it right here to this block which will make this guy go off Just show you that real quick Super simple. As you can see, it shoots out the sugar cane ultra fast. And there's a specific reason why I want to shoot it out so fast because of how fast this thing is. Since this can actually move at double hopper speed in terms of how fast it collects sugar cane, I need to be able to send that sugar cane out at double hopper speed as well. So what we're going to do is have actually two different connections. So one is going to be this one, this hopper right here, connecting in and going up to the top of this guy so uh, you can see I already have that now connected up so that sugar cane comes over and goes to this and then this one right here is for the sugar cane farm the passive one which does not ever like it does not produce a lot all at any given time it just produces constantly right so what we can do is we have a hopper line coming over from this we had the chest right there before the hoppers are leading over to this dropper as well to take sugar cane to the dropper. So what we can actually do, and hopefully I'll be able to do this and still get out of here, is we could take this, actually let's do it this way, just so we're a tiny bit less cramped, I think. Let's just go ahead and let's put a hopper here, 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 and here, perfect. So now that will snake around and go through there. The hoppers for me at this point aren't expensive because I have the iron farm, and bam, that is it. Next, we need to kind of finish things up here by setting up our water. So let's go ahead and no, let's go ahead and do that. The water is going to be super easy. I actually have some ice here and then I need some buttons. Now what I can do is I can put the ice down. Did I put down my hoppers? I put the, I threw down my hoppers, didn't I? Give me those. I want to get rid of sure granite. All right, and you see our water made it all the way down to this point. So what I could do is I could just put another button right here, put down another piece of ice, break that, and it's gonna lead all the way down to here. Now that'll actually be enough to shoot it in there, but I guess just in case like maybe I load chunks or something like that, what I'll do is I'll just put down this. Actually here, let's do this. Let's come back a little bit. Let's put one down about right here. It could be on the wall or on the floor. I'll just put it on the wall. And now items, when they go across, they'll shoot straight up. They'll have enough momentum to come all the way across. And then bloop, they'll go up here into what is about to be our storage room, which I'm going to transform right now. Okay, we have the top of the drop chute right here. And all of the sugar cane will come up and it will flow. It's kind of hard to see. I can, I can get a little bit better view if I knock this guy right here out. But what it'll do is it'll flow the sugar cane all the way across and it'll kind of snake its way through unfortunately my water stream was not long enough to get to this last row of hoppers right there um but i i don't really have a problem with that what i can do is i can use that last row of chests for i don't know something else um there's no real good way for me to add in like ice to like skid the um the sugar cane across like i did down below so i think we'll just deal with it like this and we'll use that last row of chests for something else but now if i pop down here uh, let me fix this right there let me get my shovel back out which i just put away there we go we got our storage all set and ready to go uh which is absolutely awesome um it's a little cramped in here but again that's kind of what like the whole point of this area is right this area is all supposed to be um functional on the inside and looks good on the outside and i do think we have accomplished that last but not least we have an on off switch for the sugarcane uh bone meal farm so that right there will turn it on that right there will turn it off i probably need some way to like better signify that and then i have like 
a backish way to get down there. Um, the way that switch works is it powers that block. That block powers this redstone, and this redstone signal travels down. It'll hit a repeater a couple of different times just to get the signal far enough. And if we follow it all the way through here and up through here, you'll see it makes its way to this block that we were powering before, and that turns the micro farm on and off. So if you guys enjoyed this episode, please drop a like down below. Drop me some comments about some things that you would like to see in the future or comments about things that I did in today's episode. Uh, next episode, we will be fighting the Wither. It is that time. We're going to go over how to get a beacon, how to defeat the Wither, and how to utilize that beacon and all of its effects as well. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Let's do a nice little fly over here to take a look. It looks spectacular, as does the house. I love it. And it's been fun, guys. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>